All right, well, check this out. Pretty crazy, huh? So, what do you think? We got some kind of magnetism short over here or something? Hmm. Hey everybody, welcome back again today to Retro Tech. I'm Steve and I've got a 14M4U Sony PVM here in the shop. And this one's doing something pretty strange. You can see a purplish, darkish hue over here on this side of the screen and then boom. Sometimes it'll just go away like it just did right there. And then what that's telling me is there's some kind of short or something that's going on here with uh, messing up the magnetism. It could be the deflection yoke. It could be that there is a installed SDI board on this monitor and maybe that's somehow interfering and shorting something out or grounding something on the shell and causing that hue to show up. So we're going to take a look inside of this monitor and see what's causing this. The first thing we need to do is power it down and take the outer shell off and then I'm going to start by inspecting in there and I'll come back and show you what I find out after that. Now I've removed the shell and what you're looking at is this optional SDI module here that's been installed and it looks like it was properly installed. The thing that I'm concerned is since it seems to be this side that has the issues there's either some kind of extra magnetism where this isn't um, demagnetized correctly or possibly it's interfering by grounding something out when you you know it's a little bit loose as it hangs here it's just kind of uh, again an additional option so it's not normally on here and it, at this point this is a like analog SDI so it's pretty useless at this point so anyway what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start feeding our signal back in here and I'm going to see if just by me moving this a little bit or uh, grounding it against anything uh, will cause that color image to show. If it does, then we may just remove this entirely and hopefully that will get rid of our issue. Now let's test out my little theory here. I would not recommend you doing this if you don't know anything about electronics or you've never worked on CRTs before, so please just note that's my disclaimer to you. But let's just see. I do believe it's got to do with this. See, as you tap it, Eventually it'll hit something and cause it to ground out. And then same thing as if you tap it, it just eventually goes away. So I'm thinking that that's just rattling in there and causing that interference. Here's our board that I've removed. Again, it's the BKM-101C Component SDI Video Kit. And that is fully shielded. Now I've also removed some cabling here. And this longer cable goes into the power supply. So I've removed it, it connects power to this board, and then this is goes into our main board so it allows for it to communicate with the main board and the video inputs and add it into the main part of the monitor. So let's set up. Now let's go ahead and test this out, make sure that the monitor still works without that SDI card installed. All right, so without that installed, we're not, we started it up, we didn't get any interference. Let's run a degauss again. As I tap the sides, I'm not noticing anything, so the grounding is probably not coming from the degaussing cable. And then this is the shielding on the main PVM that I'm tapping against. And we'll just see if I can make that actually change and ground anymore. And no, it's not really happening. Uh, I don't really want to slap inside there and make the current ground out, but that's what I think was happening is that board was causing something on the inside to short, more than likely a connection involving the deflection yoke since we were getting that discoloration. I'm going to let it run for a while and uh, run some more tests on it, and hopefully if it, if it shows back up, I'll definitely come back and update it. Uh, otherwise, we'll see what happens and how it looks once um, I've got it fully tested. Well, I've completed some pretty thorough testing and I've not been able to recreate that magnetism or short at all since I uninstalled the SDI card. And so I'm kind of convinced that that was the problem to begin with. And, you know, logic would tell you that once you remove something and you can't get it to come back, then that was probably the issue. So that's good. That's a pretty easy fix here and something maybe to think about if you have this kind of an issue and you do see something like an extra card installed or... Um, there's always a good chance to go in and check inside the monitor too to see if uh, for some reason some cable looks to be grounding against the shell or maybe another portion of the board or something. That's another reason 
once you get these PVMs, at least you want to do is open it up, inspect it a little bit. That's a really good idea because you don't want to have a lot of trouble inside from shorts or anything like that. But now the PVM seems to be working great. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is the customer would like to do the full uh, deluxe cap kit, similar to the one you saw in my 20M4U uh, demo video. We're going to do that cap kit on this monitor, and then we'll adjust the yoke a little bit and some of the deflection to make sure it's in uh, its best available condition after that. Well, that's going to do it for the repair portion of the video, but as I finish out today, I want to show some close-ups of Mario and some other things on your screen so you can get an idea for how sharp this 14M4U is. I can confirm that with my uh, eyeballs, I can tell a difference between the 800 and 600 lines on resolution. It's really going to be difficult to show that in comparison video. Thanks again for watching everybody. Please let me know what you think with a comment below. And if you enjoyed the video, hit the like for me. And I will see you all next time with some more retro content.